Hello, my name is Duncan and welcome to Bath Books. I don't think anybody's really calling me yet, but let's back away from the donkey. Uh, my Labrador there is just going to say hello as she normally does as I'm doing a video. And I said welcome. If you hear any wind noise in the background, it's a rather dreek and damp day here in Scotland. But, and there's a plane going over in the distance. So all the noises. Uh, hopefully none of that's going to interrupt anything. Uh, but yeah, this is my pick and mix video, which I wanted to get out this weekend, but I, I don't know if I mentioned before, I'm the full-time carer for my uh, wife who has a disability and is long-term ill, so sometimes things just get away and I just don't have time to do the things I wanted to do. So I'm recording this on Monday morning, hopefully go out by Monday evening, and we'll see how we do. So this video is probably going to have a cut in the middle of it, as much as I don't like uh, cutting too much because obviously it adds to any editing it's just because at the back end i'm gonna have um some things i got for my birthday which i think people might be interested in just uh, some books and bits uh i don't like to say oh look, look look what i got look what i got but i just think some people may find that interesting so that's gonna be in the second part of this video uh so i'm gonna start as i started last week with um the times literary supplement i get the times literary supplement weekly it's one of the best things that you know writing up on books and things yes it doesn't really study much on uh genre fiction and as a big science fiction fan that's sometimes a bit of a disappointment but it's just nice to read some good writing some interesting reviews and i just thought yet again i'd just talk about some bits are in it so that's the cover of this week's so i've got a couple of sticky notes in there just to work out the points i've not 100 percent read it yet i've only just sort of flipped through it and read a couple of little articles so there'd be stuff in their mix, but it's just things that have caught my attention. And the first one I'm going to show you is a, a double page article. I'll take a photo and put this up afterwards called One Step Beyond. And this is a long review of a book. The book is called Endurance and it's by Levinson Wood and it's published by Apollo. And it's called 100 Tales of Survival and Exploration. And it's quite interesting because you always think about people who successfully explore places, but it's often the failures that are quite more interesting. If you think of, uh, you know, North Pole exploration, Amundsen got there first, but um, Captain Scott is the one everybody seems to talk about. Uh, I've got a couple of books on Ernest Shackleton, Shackleton who in this failed um, Antarctic exploration who I find very interesting but this book is going through lots of tales and it goes through things like it does mention Shackleton in it and according to the thing it's also got um Aaron Rolston you know the man who famously got trapped in a desert and had to cut his own arm off to survive uh, and it has other interesting things like uh I'm just gonna read directly from here a story of um Hiro Onodo sorry for the appalling Japanese pronunciation, who was a Japanese intelligence officer during the Second World War. He survived for 29 years in the Philippine jungle, unaware that the war was over. And it's got a it's, uh, partly talking through stuff via his memoir. And it's got tales like that in this. And it's the sort of book that I find very interesting. Whether I buy it is, I don't know if I see it around, but I keep an eye out in the library or anything like that. But it just sounds a very interesting book. So that was the first thing that sort of caught my eye in this week's country supplement uh they do have a review i know it was released a few weeks ago of stephen king's new book fairy tale i'd like some stephen king but i'm not a big one i'm not gonna rush out and buy it but if i come across it i will buy it and probably read it so that's one thing they've got to, i think they give a pretty good review as well I noticed the other day that it's already been optioned for a TV program or a TV or a film of some sort. This one I wouldn't buy it, but I find it quite interesting. It's called Midland Motown. And uh, it's a book called Second City by Richard uh, Finan. Uh, there's a page there. As I said, I will take some pictures and you will be seeing that there shortly. And it's basically about the history of the city of Birmingham. Which for me I find quite interesting is because I went to university in Birmingham, so I lived there for three years, and it's just yeah, it's just one of these towns that I find it quite interesting. And then the final thing in a 
times the supplement that I found interesting is a thing about the new wave of British heavy metal. As a fan since my teen years of heavy metal and all of that, they've got uh, Denim and Leather, The Rise and Fall of the New Wave of British Heavy Metal by Michael Han. And it goes through all the history, goes through bands like Saxon, Iron Maiden, and all the bands that sort of went by the wayside but influenced people, bands like Diamond Head, if you've not heard of them, who big influence on Metallica. And it just sounds like quite an interesting book. I think at the end it goes through all the normal tales of excess and stuff, which isn't the bit that I find overly interesting, but it does sound like quite an interesting book. So yeah, that is, so it's called Denim and Leather by Michael Mann. I'll see if I can find a cover of the book uh, online. And if I can, I will put it up there. If you don't see it there, I've not managed to find one. So that's that one. The card is coming outside. So I'm just going to have a quick talk about, you know, this week I've not read as much as I normally do. I said I normally get through one to two books a week. It all depends. I finished uh, Anne McCaffrey, The Skies of Pern. I have read this before. It is a reread. It is the last of the, if you know the Dragon Riders books, there's several timelines. And this one is following the Ninth Path, which is basically the, the timeline that follows from the her first release book, Dragonflight. And it's following that timeline. And this was book 16, I think, technically, which is the final book in it. And it sums it up quite nicely and it introduces you to characters that you may not know and other ones you've only seen in the background. And McCaffrey's writing is always incredibly enjoyable. But the thing about it is you get to the end and as much as it's a good ending, you know there's more to come. And sadly, a man McCaffrey died shortly after this was published. And I know that she was actually in the middle of writing a book following up. And I so want to know what happens afterwards, but it's not going to happen. I know her son has written some books with her, but they books with her and some by himself which were following it but I don't think there's any sign of him sort of going to her notes and publishing any of that work but we will see in the future so yeah I finally finished that I'm still reading Hotel well not technically reading because I've not actually um read any this week I, was still, I said it's on my Kindle if you saw my uh bits and bobs last week I said that I'm reading um Alex Haley's Hotel and I'm just not as much as I'm enjoying it I'm just not reading at the moment so it's just sort of sitting in the background the other book I started reading this week, and I will be finishing it today because there's only about 30 pages to go, is Robert Sheckley, Dimension of Miracles. Uh, this is quite an interesting book. It came out 10 years before The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Uh, and it's got some very parallels with it. It's got some plot points in there that are almost identical to Hitchhiker's. Uh, Douglas Adams always said he'd never read it before. Uh, Hitchhiker's came out, and I... There's no reason not to believe him. I think it's just a case of two writers having similar ideas at different times. Uh, it's a really quite interesting book. It's a satire of things. Basically, the basic plot is a man wins an intergalactic lottery, not knowing he's won it because he's on Earth, and he gets taken away to collect his prize, and then he has to get back to Earth while somebody's trying to kill him, basically. I'm going to do a video directly on this book and some Robert Sheckley work. Uh, I'm hoping to get it out by the back of this week, probably Friday. If not, it'll be early next week. So if you're interested, keep an eye out for that. So that was Dimension of Miracles, Robert Sheckley. So once I finish that, my plan is, and I'm hoping it won't change because if you know the way I read, I, don't, I sort of changed my mind last minute, is I finally get onto uh, the great writer Jack Williamson, uh, Darker Than You Think which is a werewolf story. And it's apparently it's a very original werewolf story. I've never read it, so it'll be the first time for reading that one for me. And I'm quite looking forward to starting that, and I hopefully will be starting reading that tonight. Um, so other bits, let me just have a flick down here. I have finally started reading, about three or four issues in, I do read some comics. And I've finally started reading Doomsday Clock. And if you don't know, Doomsday Clock is like a sequel to The Famous Watchmen. And I know a lot of people think there shouldn't have been a sequel. Uh, I started collecting this when it was first published. And it's meant to be 12 issues over a year. And it took them two years to publish it. And I say, thank God I wasn't reading it. It was going along. But I'm finally reading it. I'm on about issue four or five. Should finish it in a couple of days. I'll show you some of the covers. 
and I said this doomsday clock. I do like some of the artwork it is. Written by Jeff Johns, I think, if I remember rightly. I can probably tell you exactly who wrote it. I'll show you some of the artwork inside. Some gorgeous artwork. Some of the panels. This basically brings the Watchmen into the some of the DC universe. And I said, I'm really quite enjoying it, about three or four issues in. I know some Watchmen aficionados don't think it should exist, but I'm enjoying it. And I said, I think that's probably it for the first part of this video. As I said, it's a right bits and bobs at war. Pick and mix, as I like to call it. Uh, so I will stop this here and I'll go and get the other things I wanted to show you. At the crossroads of the continent, they had found love. But now their lives were about to take a different turn. A turn toward terror. Mystique Books, a series of international novels of romantic suspense where love and danger go hand in hand. Mystique, four best-selling novels every month wherever you buy paperback books. Your continuing affair with people who love dangerously. Mystique Books. Hello, I'm back. Uh, hopefully you're still with me. I just wanted to show you these. There's a few things that my wife got me for my birthday and I just thought some people might find them quite interesting. And I know re recently there's been book trek. I have, one of the things my wife got me was Star Trek Discovery Wonderlands. I'm a late coming to Discovery when it was originally released as a TV series. I sort of avoid it because it doesn't look or feel anything like Star Trek as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but after watching Strange New Worlds, which I really, really loved, I went back and started watching Discovery. And I'm really liking it as a science fiction programme. I think of it more as Trek adjacent, because it still doesn't feel like Star Trek. But I'm really enjoying it as a science fiction series. This book, as I said, Wonderlands, by Una McCormack, who's not an author that I know, is set after the events of season two, and between season two and season three, where there's a year gap. So I'm really quite excited to read this one. So that's one. And, and some more Star Trek related things. My wife got me this gorgeous, gorgeous art book. I think of myself as a bit of an artist. I draw and paint and things. And I love some art on this. It is an art book on the, as far as I'm concerned, the best Star Trek film, the original Star Trek motion picture that I originally saw in 78 or 79 in the cinema with my dad in a cinema which had smoking over one side and non-smoking on the other side as the advert i'm going to put in between this and my last one but this book shows there's a lot of text in it to read about the making of the film but it's also got some gorgeous gorgeous art which i'm gonna try and show you some pictures i am probably going to do a separate video on this some point in the next few weeks to show you some of the gorgeous pre-production artwork and things that's on this. I'm going to try and hold this up, it's not going to be easy. I will actually take some photos once I finish this video and put some of those up so you can see those. But that's the, uh, it's called Star Trek The Motion Picture, Inside the Art and Visual Effects. I've also got coming a similar book on the Wrath of Khan Star Trek 2. Uh, it's not been released, it's on pre-order and that's also part of my birthday present for my wife. Also got a copy with it of this print of pre-production work. So I'm not sure who the artist is. But anyway, so that's that one. Put that to one side. Also, catch this, any Princess Bride fans? I got a board game to go with it. I know, inconceivable. But hey, I love myself a good board game. I'll show you the back of it. So we're big fans of board games. So, is that coming? I'm just shuffling the books around here a second. Okay, 
another book I got, which probably those in the UK will probably identify with, with more than me, more than those abroad, is uh, Nigel by Monty Don. Uh, Monty Don, for those outside the UK, is a gardener and TV presenter. He presents a Gardener's World TV programme. And his golden retriever, Nigel, used to always be in the background. And he's now got another golden retriever. And it's a gorgeous dog. And it's a, dog, it's a book about his dogs. I sadly, we sadly lost our 16-year-old golden retriever this year. Sorry. So that's been quite hard. And I love reading about golden retrievers. And I'd love to have one in my life again. But at the moment, I've just got my gorgeous Yorkian uh, black lap. But yeah, so I'm looking forward to actually reading that one. Because I've had an eye on it for a while. I think this was written before... Nigel sadly died. As I said earlier, I'm a bit of an artist and I've been getting into doing some hand drawn lettering and hand painted lettering and sign writing. When I was about 17 or 18 in 19, um, yes, I actually sign wrote some stock cars for anybody in America. Stock cars in the UK are totally different than those ones in America, but I actually sign wrote some company names on them. I can remember spending hours painting them. And so I've always had quite an interesting lettering, and I'm an ex-printer and stuff, so I have this book here about hand lettering. I've not actually opened it to look inside it yet, which I'm going to do later. And I may put some up here if anybody's interested. Second art book is going along is from, and this would be the final thing, is from season two of The Mandalorian. I have the book from season one, which is some gorgeous artwork. So I may do a video showing some of the stuff from both those books. But we have some stunning, stunning. Let me find some interesting plates. We'll have something like that. Hope you can see it. I'll see if I can get some pictures and put them on the screen shortly. Or maybe even just do a bit of a slideshow at the end. We'll see. So yeah, so those are the few things I got around about my birthday. And I just thought some of you might find those interesting. I said, yeah, normally if I'm doing a pick and mix, you know, some weeks I'm not going to do one, they would come up the weekend. But I said this one's on Monday because of the way my weekend went. And I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I said the back end of the week, I'm hoping to get out the Robert Sheckley video. Uh, I'm probably going to pop a video out about Wednesday which I'm not sure what I'm going to do or talk about just yet so that is to be decided I've got a few things I can do but anyway thank you for everybody who started watching me uh, I'm quite um, stunned about people are interested in what I'm saying and I will continue doing what we can anyway thank you very much and uh, have a good day